What's going on, everybody? What is going on? It is Tuesday, February 27, 2024, and we are back for another midday stream here on the Torian Rain Reloaded channel. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you are new, hit the share button too so many more people can see it. I am multi-streaming today on YouTube as well as on X, so shout out to everybody who is watching on X as well. So you can see we have a bit of a history lesson that we're going to be doing today, and we'll go into in a little bit. And let me go ahead and acknowledge the people who are here so far. Hack Sign KT, Shramstein B1, Lahomer Washington, Sherelle Bryant, Easy Beats, Patricia Jones, Volvo to Love, Sherelle Bryant, Miriam R, BB, Letitia, and Denise Scales. It says I have 51 people in here. Again, shout out to everybody that is here on this mid afternoon stream this uh on this tuesday afternoon so what made me want to do this particular stream today is because i was watching a broadcast that tba recently did i believe he did it on sunday and he was talking about california and you know um you know they keep talking and bringing up about how the the reparations task force is out there in california and whatnot and then also I keep thinking about how a lot of the usual suspects love to say, oh, why is it that y'all want to get reparations out of California when slavery wasn't even in California? And that always just kind of sat on my mind, but I never got the nerve to actually go and like do the research myself until Sunday. And it was some very interesting things that I found. And shout out to Denise Scales for the $20 super sticker. I greatly appreciate it. But I found some very interesting things pertaining to the state of California and the role that they played in slavery. Y'all got a bit of a hint of it if y'all looked at the thumbnail, more so of the object that's on the left side of the thumbnail. That should give you a little bit of a hint of the part that they played. But there's some other things they played in as well. But that's a major part that they played. So I hope everybody is doing well. Um, I hope that this is going to be a bit of a history lesson for people that's in here because some of this stuff may be fresh to some people. Some people may be aware of what it is that I'm going to talk about. This stuff right here was kind of new to me as well, as I am not a California resident. So I really wasn't aware of it because I didn't have I felt like I didn't have to look for it. But I said, you know what? The research is there. It's amazing what a simple research will do when you want to look some things up. Denise said, I remember your series on Sundown Towns. Yes, California had a couple of Sundown Towns in their state. I think when I was doing, I did that series, I think it was about three cities or towns in California that were Sundown Towns. I know Burbank was one of them. And Burbank is now basically like the next door neighbor to L.A. Or it's like we're in like where all those movie studios and stuff is at is like in Burbank. So, like I said, this is going to be a history lesson for all of us. And, of course, once I get through everything, I'll drop the link. And if anybody want to come up, then they can go ahead and feel free to do so. Now, this is going to be one that's going to it's not going to really have any. um, Is no videos. That's attached to this. So all of this is pretty much article based. Shout out to Sherelle Bryant for the 70. I'm sorry, for the two dollar super sticker. I appreciate it. I was getting confused with the uh, number count. It says I have 70 people that's in here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, put a one in the chat. If any of you ever heard of something called. Well, first off, let me not even start. The, let me not jump the gun. Let me start with this part first. And there's a reason why I'm starting right here first. So this is an article that came from the SF Museum, which I'm guessing is San Francisco Museum.org. And it was talking about how California got admitted. Now, this is a very, very, very lengthy article, but I only wanted to focus on one part. And this is the part that's highlighted in purple. And it says the war had ended. Peace had been proclaimed. Some solution must be reached, but there was but one. 
the constitutional convention which met at monterey at the call of acting governor Gov acting governor riley unanimously adopted the resolution that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude unless for punishment of crimes shall ever be tolerated in this state while the unanimous vote for a free state by no means puts an end to the question of slavery in all of its phrases it may easily be seen that the die had been cast there could be no retreat so profound was the national influence of this vital decision that dr wiley was led to pronounce it the pivot point with the slavery question in the united states our great commonwealth of the pacific entering the union as the 16th free state destroyed forever the equilibrium between the north and the south so while they claim that uh, california was a free state it's not like they weren't against it at the same time they just say that they didn't participate in it or so they claim they didn't but i beg to differ like i said simple research you'll be amazed at the stuff that you'll be able to find let me see if there's anything else on here before i move on to the next part i don't think there's really anything else left there but i really wanted to highlight that part as the foundation or the i guess you could say the kickoff point of what i'm going to go further into when it comes to this uh narrative which leads me to this uh, story right here, this article right here, that's coming from the California Historical Society website that basically has everything you can find about the state of California. Now, this article was posted on April 2nd, 2020. Now, how many people in the chat have ever heard of something called the California Gold Rush? Let me know in the chat if you've ever heard of something called the California Gold Rush. If, even if you don't know anything about it, but you have heard of that event. Okay, Hacksaw said that has one. Jacoby said one. Denise said one. That's it. Me. Sean says basically has spoken for the chat and said all of us. Yes. Yeah, so, of course you know exactly um, what it is. And it's basically self-explanatory of what it was. They basically saying that California struck gold and people ran, literally ran out there, even those who weren't even from California to try to go and see if they can get as much gold as they possibly could. And shout out to Lisa Cabrera for coming through with the 50. She says, Shalom, touring and rain reloaded. I appreciate it. And shout out to Lisa Cabrera. And if you haven't not subscribed to her channel, first off, if you subscribe to me, you should definitely be subscribed to her. But in case you haven't, be sure to subscribe to her channel as well. But basically, like what I was saying, the California Gold Rush was basically when they put out a call that or people found out that California, the state of California had struck gold and everybody ran out there to see how much they could get. But what they don't tell you is that a lot of the white Southerners who went out there carried their slaves along with them to do the digging. And surprise, surprise the slaves their slaves were not compensated like they literally did a lot of the, the digging and the hard work like the labor like they were doing in the south and still wasn't compensated for their work go figure so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna read what this is talking about here according to the u.s history most most of us are familiar with california came into the union in 1850 as a quote-unquote free state Slavery was an evil that occurred in the South far from here, or so we were taught. Yet framed for its liberal reputation, California has far more of a complicated history. In a late night raid in April 1852, three formerly enslaved black men who had built a lucrative business hauling mining supplies during the California gold rush were rousted from their cabin by armed white men. And shout out to Sherelle Bryan for the additional $2. I appreciate it. They were forcibly taken before a justice of the peace in Sacramento County who ordered them deported to their former owner, a white man in Mississippi. Robert Perkins, his brother Carter, and their business partner, Sandy Jones, will file the lawsuit challenging the state's new fugitive slave law passed just six weeks earlier. It decreed that any enslaved black person who had entered the state of California when it was still a territory had no legal right to freedom, even though the state constitution banned slavery. 
So they're basically saying if you was enslaved and you went to California to quote unquote be free, just and it was before it became a state and it was still a territory, they had every right to bring you back to where you came from and basically re enslave you. In 1848, when the gold rush hit, White Southerners flocked to the state with hundreds of enslaved black people, forcing them to toil in gold mines, often hiring them out to cook, serve, or perform a variety of labor. Sometimes fortunes were amassed on the backs of this free labor, yet California's place in the nation's history of slavery is missing from most historical accounts, and many are surprised to learn of its practice in the Golden State. How, put a... Put some fire in the chat if y'all are getting a history lesson right now. We're just getting started. And shout out to the individual that just sent me that uh, cash app. I'm not going to say your full name, but you know who you are. Shout out to you. Like the nation it became, California was mined, it mired in contradictions from its beginning. It was a free state born out of the politics of slavery. In a precarious effort to balance the, the concerns of Southern slaveholding interests and those against slavery's expansion, Congress cobbled together the Compromise of 1850. The series of bills admitted California as a free state while also granting important concessions of the South to the South. That included the Draconian Federal Fugitive Slave Act, which required government officials and ordinary white citizens in all states and territories to actively assist slaveholders in recapturing enslaved people who escaped from slave holding jurisdiction so y'all just got a definition in, of the fugitive slave act just in case you never heard of the fugitive slave act until today and didn't know what it was that doesn't that sound often a like a lot like what um what a lot of pc loves to do when they do those citizens arrests when I read that definition of the Fugitive Slave Act, it sounds it sounds just like that, especially when it comes to uh, them trying to assist to hold down a black person in a situation where they're being mishandled by the police. California's Constitution proclaimed that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, unless for a punishment of a crime, shall be tolerated. That's why I went over that first part first, so we can get an idea of where we were headed. Yet archives statewide contain evidence that slavery was practiced out in the open. One newspaper, no, newspaper ad in the Sacramento transcript offered a valuable Negro girl, aged 18, of amiable disposition, a good washer, ironer and cook for sale now that's out of sacramento now last time i checked sacramento was not only a city in california but it is also the capital it probably wasn't the capital at that time but it would go on to be the capital of, of california later yet as the perkins case illustrates many blacks struck for freedom in response the pro-slavery legislature passed the Fugitive Slave Law, specifically targeting blacks who escaped in California had not, and had not fled from slave states. The Perkins brothers and Sandy Jones were the first test case. In 1849, Charles Perkins, a white man from Mississippi, set out to mine gold in Placerville County, taking Carter Perkins, an enslaved man, on his father's plantation with him. Robert Perkins and Sandy Jones soon followed, forced to migrate west and leave their wives and children behind. All three went to work for Charles Perkins, mining gold. When Charles Perkins fell on hard times and decided to return south, he could only afford to return the passage for himself. He left the three black men with a friend. He in turn agreed to grant them their freedom if they worked for him for six months. Set free in November 1851, the industrious trio launched a mining supply business in Opier, earning $3,000, which is close to $100,000 in today's dollars. Their California dream came to an end when Charles Perkins reported the men as runaway slaves and demanded their returns. Now, look at that underhanded shit right there. Did y'all hear that? So because he couldn't afford to take the enslavement that he had back with him, he left them there with a friend. And those three men, as they like to tell us to do, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, bootstraps mind you, slavery was still enacted. It wasn't abolished until over, well over 10 years later. They 
worked for themselves, built up their equity, which was a lot of money, especially for them back then. But then when they found out what he was doing, he put a cutoff to that and then reported them as runaway slaves when they weren't even runaways. This guy dragged them out there to do work for him when he couldn't afford to send them back with him. And then when they started making their own money, he said, oh, no, we got to put a stop to this. So let me go ahead and report them as runaway so I can not only put a stop to the money they were making, but also so I can pocket the money because I can say they were my slaves. Man, listen, y'all put put a black fist in the chat for those three men that actually put in the work. And tell me how they're any how they're any different from today. See, this is the lesson right here. They don't teach you all in schools. This is not and they love to say how black people are so lazy. Look at how resilient they were back then. Sacramento's activist black community raised funds to hire Cornelius Cole, a prominent lawyer and founder of California's Republican Party, which opposed slavery's expansion and future U.S. senator to defend the former minors. Cole argued that the state fugitive slave law violated the California Constitution slave ban. However, in 1852, the pro-slavery state Supreme Court ordered the defendants demanded to Charles Perkins in Mississippi. Legend has it that they escaped during their ship's passage through the Panama Isthmus, but their fate is unknown. As evidence in the Perkins case, the persistence of slavery was met by black, black American resistance. Newspapers cover street brawls between the slave people and those who claim to own them. In the gold mines of the Sierra Nevada, on the wharves of San Francisco, on downtown streets in Los Angeles, on farms and ranches throughout rural counties and in courtrooms, the drama of slavery and resistance to slavery played out in California during the state's formative first decade. Some prominent black American leaders even went armed into isolated areas and liberated slaves. In an effort to highlight this omission from the historical record, the ACLU of Northern California KQED, the California Historical Society, and the Equal Justice Society partnered on a unique public education project, Gold Chains, the Hidden History of Slavery in California. It features multimedia stories and archival, ar ar archival research that examines this little-known history that was instrumental in shaping California's complex racial landscape today. The history unearthed by the Gold Chains Project adds to our understanding and that no part of the United States, including California, was untouched by the perniquous system whose legacy manifests today in our laws, courts, and culture. That was quite an interesting write-up. And this was posted April 2nd, 2020. Guess what was going on at that time? We was in the middle of a pandemic. So it would have been very easy to miss this because no one would have thought to look this up. Well, like the good saying goes, better late than ever. Sherelle said, unfortunately, my phone does not provide the option for the black. But, hey, it is what it is. Understandable. You put the fist in the chat. That's all that matters. That means you're, you're attentive. Again, this is California, y'all. This is the state that claims they're the most liberal. I call bullshit. And if y'all live in the state of California, and I know I have some subscribers who live out there. I know y'all were not taught this in school. I know for a fact you weren't. But like I said. You got people online saying California had nothing to do with slavery. Why are you going to them for slavery? But what also that task force is not doing is they're not putting this out there. I have listened to so many of them talk for the last year or so, and never once did I ever hear them mention what I just read to you. A simple Google search led me to this. All I did was type in California slavery or the role Cal or the role slavery played in california and all this came up this was one of the first things that popped up at the top of the search
Now, I'm going to pull up this next article right here that was posted on something called theconversation.com. And it was posted August 11, 2021. Now, this article kind of piggybacks off of the one I just uh, read to you. But it actually goes into a little bit more about not only in California, but also just the West as a whole, as far as the West Coast. So it might even branch out into other states surrounding California. So this is going to be very, because again, they always keep trying to say slavery was only in the South, but they don't like to talk about how slavery affected the American economy as a whole. They love they loved to only focus on, oh, slavery just happened in the South and nowhere else. Bullshit. It happened other places. And if they don't and if they didn't have a plantation or they didn't have people that were enslaved there, you know, people there as slaves, their economy got a boost from it. So in other words, they were affected by it immensely on a financial level. Again, y'all, this is a good classic case for what we are fighting for. So this one is titled The Little Known Story of How Slavery Infiltrated California and the American West. And shout out to all of my subscribers who live on the West Coast. So, you know, who well, I can say who are three hours uh, behind me because, <laughs> you know, me be on the East Coast. The history of American slavery generally conjures a set of familiar images. Sprawling plantations, white with cotton, gangs of enslaved black Americans stoop low over the fields, bull whips cracking in the summer heat. It's a strictly southern story, or so we are told. But that narrative misses a huge swath of the North American map and a crucial chapter in, Amer in U.S. history. American slavery wasn't confined to the cotton fields and sugar plantations of the South. By the mid-19th century, it had reached the western end of the continent. Human bondage had already been outlawed in California for two years when Robert Givens, a gold prospector and rancher, began planning to, to bring a black slave named Patrick into the state from Kentucky in 1852. Givens understood California's anti-slavery law, but wasn't concerned. Send Patrick West anyway, he urged his father, a Kentucky slaveholder. When he gets in, Givens wrote in a letter that resides at the University of California, Berkeley, Berkeley. Why does Berkeley sound so familiar? Isn't that that school where a lot of those Asians be trying to get into? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm overthinking it. What do y'all think? I should like to see anyone get him out. Givens confidence was justified. Perhaps as many as 1500 enslaved black Americans were forcibly transported to California between 1849 and 1861. Hundreds arrived before the state's constitutional ban on slavery went into effect in 1850, but many others came after. California, as Givens realized, was a free state in name only. I'm a scholar of slavery in the American Far West. My new book, West of Slavery, explains how Southerners, including Givens, transformed California and neighboring territories into an appendage of the plantation states. Despite some excellent earlier works on the subject, the history of slavery in the American West hasn't received the public attention it desperately warrants, and I'm not surprised. Amid the ongoing global dialogue on slavery and its legacies, the American West is often left out of the conversation. That's partly because myths of the West as a landscape of freedom and rugged out individualism are rooted deep in popular thinking. And today, Californians tout their reputation for cosmopolitan liberalism and cultural pluralism. Slavery has little place in the stories America's tell about the West, scratched beneath the veneer of this mythology, however, and a much darker history emerges. That was a very well-written introduction to what's about to what we're really about to hear or see. In America, before the Civil War, enslaved people were moved around like checkers, as the Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison writes in her 1987 novel, Beloved. California may have been the far end of the board, but it was still in play. Black chattel slavery came to California with the gold rush in the 1840s. And shout out to Xavier. I'm not exactly sure how much that translates to in American dollars, but I appreciate it anyway. He says everywhere south of Canada is the south and this proves it. Exactly. And that's a quote we've heard several times before as well. Good. Good for pointing that out. 
Through most of the 1850s, enslaved black Americans could be found working in the gold fields and domestic spaces of California. They toiled alongside thousands of captive Native Americans. This was despite the state's constitution, which read neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except for the punishment of crimes, shall ever be tolerated in this state. That law, however, required active enforcement by anti-slavery activists. And as Givens and others discovered, such activists were in short supply, especially in the remote mining districts where slaveholders often clustered and forced their enslaved laborers to dig for gold. More often than not, California slaveholders had the agents of the law on their side. Five of the seven justices who sat on the California Supreme Court between 1852 and 1857 hailed from slave states. The chief justice during this period, Hugh C. Murray, was a native of Missouri, known for his fierce pro-slavery views and hair-trigger temper. In San Francisco and Sacramento, he publicly assaulted anti-slavery opponents with canes and bowie knives. In dozens of cases, California courts ruled in favor of slaveholders and against the freedom claims of, of black Americans, as historian Stacy Smith has illustrated. Even previously emancipated black people were returned to those who claimed them as property. Much like in that previous story, that I, article that I just read about the one who left them there, but when he saw they was making some money and making a good living out there, then he wanted to claim them back and say they were runaway slaves to basically put a halt on their progress. A lack of anti-slavery policing allowed a slaveholding colony in San Bernardino to flourish in plain sight in the early 1850s. Mormon migrants with at least two dozen enslaved black Americans in tow. Look at that, y'all. Mormon migrants built a settlement that rivaled neighboring Los Angeles in size and by most metrics surpassed it as an, as an agricultural output. Only in 1856 did the settlement's largest slaveholder come to trial. And only because he attempted to leave the state with his 14 enslaved laborers. The story was much the same in Utah and New Mexico. Enslaved black Americans were among the first settlers of what would become Mormon Utah. They arrived in the late 1840s as the chattel property of a group of Mormons from the deep south known as the Mississippi Saints. In 1852, Utah's territorial legislature passed a slave code to protect the right of fellow Mormons to hold black people as property. Seven years later, the territory of New Mexico followed with a slave code of its own. With 31 sections, an act to provide for the protection of property and slaves in this territory was far and away the longest bill passed by the legislature that session. It detailed a litany of punishable offenses for enslaved people and several protections for their enslavers. It also outlawed emancipation within the borders of the territory, according to a U.S. senator from Kentucky. John J. Crittenden. New Mexico law is as complete on the subject as the law of any state that I know of. Aspiring slaveholders in New Mexico could also acquire the labor of bound Native Americans, either by perturing indigenous captives from slave traders or by trapping peasants in escapable cycles of debt. The enslavement of Native people in New Mexico was so deeply entrenched that the practice survived the Civil War in the passage of the 13th Amendment. Enslaved Indians could be found in New Mexican households in well into the late 19th century. The history of slavery in the American West is easy to miss, whereas enslaved people in the South were often concentrated on large park plantations. The bound laborers of the West generally worked behind closed doors or in remote mining regions. Some were smuggled illegally and held clandestinely, yet their experiences deserve closer scrutiny. Contrary to popular perception and regional mythology, the long arm of slavery reached across the United States in the 19th century, and thousands were caught in its grip. That was a very interesting, even more deeper dive into the previous article. It's like I said, the first, that previous article was a springboard. Now this one, we have now landed into the water. So I have one more article to go over, and this one is fairly recent. And when I say recent, I'm talking about as in last year this was posted. So remember, we would talk, they keep talking about the, you know, the reparations task force and all of that. They keep saying California is the first state to tackle reparations for black residents. I'm not going to read the entire thing. 
it was posted on June 29th, 2023, and then they updated it on September 12th, 2023. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go down to this part right here. When they asked the question, was there slavery in California? And the answer is yes. While California did not have large scale plantations like the southern states, slavery existed in various forms during California's early history. California was not legally a slave state, yet more than 2,000 enslaved people were brought to the state from 1850 to 1860. So you're talking about a whole decade, typically by plantation owners to work the gold mines, according to the task force. State and local governments also officials also at times upheld fugitive slave laws. So they have a timeline view right here that we're going to go over. And it says 1850, California entered the union in 1850 as a free state, but its early state government supported slavery, pro-slavery, white Southerners held a great deal of power in state legislature in the court system and among California's representatives in the U.S. Congress. In 1852, California passed and enforced a fugitive slave law that was harsher than the federal law. This made California more pro-slavery than most other free states. California also outlawed, outlawed non-white people from testifying in any court case involving white people. California did not ratify the 14th Amendment, which protected equal rights of all citizens, until 1959. That's crazy because that's the year my parents were born. The 15th Amendment, which prohibited states from denying a person's right to vote, because of race, was not ratified until 1962. Um, Basil Campbell was born enslaved in Missouri, where he was married and had two sons. In 1854, a man named J.D. Stevens bought Campbell for $1,200 and forcibly moved him to a farm in Yellow County. County. J.D. Stevens enslaved Basil Campbell in California, ignoring California status as a free state for another seven years until Stevens decided that Campbell had sufficiently paid off his purchase price. Campbell never saw his wife or two sons again. That is messed up. Bridget Biddy Mason was forced to travel west with Robert and Rebecca Smith, slaveholders who had joined the Mormon migration to Utah. The Smiths eventually took Mason and her three children to San Bernardino, California, still captive. Mason befriended free blacks who alerted the local sheriff when the Smiths made plans to take Biddy and her daughter to Texas. The sheriff took Mason and her family into protective custody before they could be moved. And the last one says, California's first governor, Peter Burnett, was a former slave owner from Tennessee and Oregon who wanted to ban black Americans from the state. He served on the state Supreme Court when it ordered a fugitive, Archie Lee, to be returned to his enslaver in violation of California's constitution. So there you go. So we learned quite a bit with this, y'all. But I want to hear from you. I know some of y'all have some opinions. So I'm curious to know what y'all have to say as it pertains to this. So, and shout out to Bath Shakama, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, for becoming a member of the channel. So I have posted the link right there in the chat. I pinned it. If anybody would like to come up, Y'all can feel free to do so. Now, y'all can't use the joke of Wallow J because I don't think Wallow J is in the chat right now. But if anybody would like to come up and speak their piece as to this, especially if y'all live in the state of California, I definitely want to see what y'all got to say about this. Because this is a pretty, this is some loaded information right here. All right, got our first person. Goddess, how are you doing? Good morning, um, Brother Tori, and I'm doing wonderful in yourself. We're doing great. Um, as it pertains to this wonderful information that you have pulled and bestowed upon us, I am eternally grateful for all your scholarship, all your um, diligent research and deep diving that you do on behalf of FBA. And um, to add to um, what you're, um, you have presented, um, I did um, heard of uh, the Fugitive Slave Act um, that was um, pushed um, in the West, but not um, 
um, they didn't uphold our rights, um, our ancestors' rights, and um, how all the cross-border or cross-state line um, um, illegal slave smuggling that happened and the false um, accusations and accusative um, putting people um, who were freed actually back into the L or into slavery, um, as well as the role that the Mormons played. They did not only have extensive accounts and records on um, slaves and um, actual ships um, with our um, ancestors' names and um, things on it, but they were major um, holders um, of slavery, as well as the role that the um, Amish played. Um, it was strictly pure evil. Um, they had a perilous attitude and they did horrific, wicked things that will almost put the salt, if not rival with the salt, uh, um, form of slavery that they did. So it's just really sick and twisted. And I'm glad that this um, information, the light has been um, shown on it. And so that they can no longer deny because it's documentation, although they try to hide it as usual. And um, yeah, they can't deny it any longer because it's out now. It definitely, definitely. And like I said, a simple Google search was all it took. And I found all of that just by typing a couple of keywords into that Google search bar. And that's what popped up. Indeed. So they couldn't use critical uh, or C uh, or T to um, hide the information and screw up the Internet like they usually do, because that's why we have to do deep dives, because they do try to hide the information. But if you search um deep enough and and just keep following one rabbit hole to the other a lot of information will be revealed or unearthed so we just have to do our due diligence as foundational black american freedmen and make sure that our story is told because it's their story our story and then there's the truth and we mm -hmm. always are pillars of the truth thank you brother b1 b1 appreciate goddess for coming up next we got Xavier, what's going on? Hey, Torian. What's going on? B1, brother. B1. Um, so uh, I really appreciate this, this, um, this, the work you put into this. This is very detailed and appreciate it. I, I have to confess, I, I don't really have, I, I didn't have uh, knowledge of, of this in uh, that, that's uh, California. Though mm -hmm. I, I mean, do don't, don't, feel, don't, you don't feel bad because like I said, a lot of people probably didn't. That's why I decided to do it. Cause again, I said, this isn't something that is taught even in the articles that I read, they said that they always push California as a quote unquote free state, but that wasn't entirely true. And they kept yeah. going with that. And I think what, like I said, what made me do it is because every time the topic of reparations came up in the state of California. You had the usual suspects and say, oh, why would they pay you like give you reparations? Because California had nothing to do with slavery yet. I just it's spent the last half. I just spent the last half hour going over multiple things that they that played into the role they had when it came to slavery. Yeah. And, and it's 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 um, it's basically their M.O. They'd like to bury a lot of these stories, like, for instance, um, so the story uh, of um, the some of the massacres that happened that were buried buried deep deep in, in the history books that they didn't allow to be taught in schools like um, uh, what what was that um, the main the major one that they wiped they basically wiped out that whole uh, town. You talking about Black Sorry. Wall Street? Black Wall Street. Sorry, I, I I know why I kept blanking on that. It, the first time a lot of people heard about that story was because it was in the uh, the series. Watchmen. Uh, uh, um, what what was that called again? What, Watchmen. Yeah, uh, yeah, Watchmen, and also um, something country. What was that? Uh, um, Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft Country, exactly. And I was shocked at how people people were so surprised that this actually happened that no one ever told them about that. And I was like, but I, it, it's just, it's as simple as reading. Like if you just get, like you said, the simple Google search and you will read 
you'll see a lot of the horrors that go on and that were never, I mean, I guess due to shame or something else, it's the whole, it's the, it's the same reason they keep trying to hide um, all their, their atrocities that they've, they've done to black people over the centuries. And, oh, sorry, I, the, the uh, what I actually wanted to point out was even the guy who they always attribute to freeing the slaves, quote unquote, Abraham Lincoln, he didn't like black people. He yeah. he actually wanted to send the freed people back to Africa at some point. Like he was as much a racist as the other people who wanted slavery. So again, it's uh, like the quote I, I put out, uh, the, everywhere south of Canada is still the south. It, it, no matter where you went, it was still, it, it still permeated that anti-black sentiment. So permeated uh, the general white white population exactly yeah, yeah they always like the like uh pedestalize abraham lincoln as if, mm -hmm. as if he was some kind of beacon and they always like to push the pro proclamation the emancipation yeah. proclamation i was like no that did not free the slaves um yeah. that definitely was not it but they tried to push it and you know I, they tried to do that even i mean when they tried to do that when i was um in middle school when we used to have our like our social studies classes because that's when it yeah. talked about political aspects and whatnot and they try to like tell us then but it's like something's just not adding up you know when you're young that's why that's why they always try to indoctrinate you when you're a kid when or you're when young, young and, when you're, and when your mind is still like developing and it hasn't registered mm -hmm. everything and then you get older and it's like you have so much animus built up when people like from uh when people tell you this because like damn you just sat there and lied to my face as a exactly. kid and then i had to go out and actually do my own research and find the actual truth and now it's like wow i've been lied to for so long but you know what i'm glad that i'm able to provide this information for those people who were unaware of this being out there because i understand not a lot of people are going to go look for this because a lot of people aren't going to think to look for it. but one thing that for black people if it's one message that i would give when you think about the stuff that the usual suspects put out there, like the propaganda as it pertains to us as black people, you should want to go do the research about everything that they say about us to see what the truth actually is. For example, yeah. how they always like to say California, I'm mean, not California, that Chicago is such a deadly city and all this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. First off, a lot of black people who I've talked to who are from there say Chicago is nothing like that. Or people I know who personally gone and visit the city of Chicago and say it's nothing like that. There's bad places everywhere. It's not just Chicago, yeah. but we know why they do it. And then another mm -hmm. thing that you'll do is just go look up in the crime, like as far as like the most like cities with the some most the most homicides. Yeah. Chicago is never in the top 10 ever. It's barely, I think it's might be it might be in the top 20, and it's not it's more closer to 20 than the 15. So yeah. they always so, so they always like to bring up Chicago, but Chicago is never in that top 10 as far as like cities with homicide. Right. But they always like to put it out. Then if you've noticed, speaking of Chicago, ever since the South of the Bordarians, or as I call them, the nice, not so secret invasioners, notice they don't put out those phantom shootings anymore like they used to they always used to say all oh, the during this holiday weekend it was 50 people mm -hmm, that got mm -hmm. shot 10 people died but they don't have a suspect now the only thing you keep hearing coming out of chicago is oh we got these these illegal immigrants there's this problem and then if you notice it's flipped they said the homicide has gone down drastically but other versions of violent crime have gone up but it's not dealing with black people it's dealing with them exactly Exactly. I, I, and I, I have to confess, I uh, I bought into the, the, the BS about Chicago for a while, not going to lie, because, um, you know, most of in, in the part of the world I live in, most of the information I got back then was from like mainstream media. But um, that's why I really appreciate channels like yours and, and a few other, uh, you know, black media that really shine the light on a lot of these things and i had to go out and and do my own research as well and uh, it's very eye-opening i actually i wept reading about um about the black wall street and mm -hmm. all the the evil that happened there i i was i was really i had nightmares for days just 
thinking about yeah. the horrors that happened there. And, you know, I really appreciate the fact that that uh, uh, people like you are out there really spreading the word. And you may not know this, but your reach is, your, your reach is far. Like, people are actually paying attention. And, uh, you know, I just want to say, like, keep up the good work because, uh, you know, the truth is powerful. And once people start seeing the truth, they start to wake up to the BS that the uh, the these uh, PC demons put out. And, you know, that, that goes a long way. It really does. It definitely. definitely changed my life. So, yeah, appreciate you, brother. And thanks for having me on. No problem. Thanks for coming up. Shout out to Xavier. Next up, we got AW1. What's going on? Hey, hey, Toy, how you been? I've been good. I'm doing good. That's good. All, all I got to say is yeah, you wasn't lying. They never, because me being from California, they never taught that in school. What part of California are you from? L.A. County. Okay. And and, you, know, uh, you noticed that when I was talking about it, L.A., Los Angeles came up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you know, they always say that it is the most progressive or this and that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Same they always, yes. yeah, they say like that's that's another thing. When I was just saying to uh, um, what I was just saying earlier, whenever mm -hmm. they put out something like that, and you look at who it's coming from, it's like okay, y'all keep pushing and saying California is the most liberal state. Is this and the third? And I'm sending myself, sending myself. Is it really though? Because when you look at some of the laws that they pass out there in California, it's really not. It's, it's really, really not. not. It's it's a lot of like they like one of the articles said. It's a lot of draconian laws. That's out there for it to claim to be such a progressive and liberal state. And then when you go and do the research like what I just did and provided this with y'all and y'all can go and provide it with other people. And I hope y'all share, it with, you know, because, you know, more and more people need to see this. Um, then it's like it's not California is not what it claims to be at all on a historical front. Right. But, yeah, I just yeah, I just. Came up here to say thank you for putting it out there. Because some of that stuff I didn't know, but I'm not surprised because, you know, especially with, with my own experiences out here myself, dealing with different communities, mm -hmm. believe me, a lot of them don't like us. <laughs> mm. I can believe that. <laughs> I mean, that's why I was telling you, when you made your first trip to, made, made your first trip to Cali, it's, I just said, just be, just don't walk anywhere. Because they, oh. cause they, you know, cause they, will, they will mess with you. They would, they would, right. they, would, they, would call, they would call the cops on you and stuff. Believe me. But I, mm -hmm. but I let my plane there, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Proud of you. Appreciate it. Shout out to AW1 for coming up. Next up, we got W. Johnson X. What's going on? Oh, wait, oh you muted yourself. My, my bad. I feel like one of them old niggas. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, bro. I just want hey, just uh, Terry and Rain, brother. I just want to, hey, man, you're doing, you're doing it good out here. If your mom and your dad didn't say I'm proud of you, this old nigga right here, this uncle, he's, I'm proud of you. You're doing I good work it. right here. You are doing good work. You I are appreciate doing it. the work. And as you can see, it's sunny, it's sunny over here in uh, San Jose, California. You see the sunshine, and that's why I'm all glaring and ish. But yeah, <laughs> man, uh, no, it's, they have buried so much of our history. It is unbelievable. I, I thought I was, a, you know, I love my black history. This is, this, this, it's like, Hey, how did I miss this? That's how much they buried it, man. Mm -hmm. That's how much they, they buried our stuff. And there were some sundown towns. Oh, yeah. In the state as oh, well. yeah. Because I did a on, whole. On your I, channel. I, on yep. The, on your, exactly. Know, the sundown series. I was mm -hmm. like, Ooh. Oh, like what? Uh, yeah, yeah, and the thing is, like, oh, and, and that's the thing because that's, that, that's the thing they they pro, like. That's why I said they proclaim California to be such a progressive and liberal state because it yeah, wasn't attached dude. to because it, it wasn't attached to the South as far as yes, slavery sir. goes. But yes, that's why sir. I said whenever they keep saying, that, I said you gotta like really go back and see to yourself. Okay, they, why do they keep saying that? What are they hiding? They keep putting this out there. So it's something oh, yeah. going on. It's something like it's something going on behind the veil. So once you lift the veil up and then this is what you see and it's like, oh, now we know why they keep saying this over mm -hmm. and over again, because they don't want people to go do the research to find out it's something more deeper going yep. on with this state. And then you find this. Yeah. And when you go further up north past Sacramento, it is all red, all it is Hickville up there, bro. 
And that's oh, yeah. where most of the sundown towns were up. If you go past Sacramento. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, like, every state that you think that has is even like a metropolitan area. There's always a certain part of that state that is very rural. It has a lot of mountains. It's very hickish. It's a lot of mm-hmm. flat lands. Like I said, every state has it. It's just some states is very, is rural all over. But that's when you go to your more Midwest states. But even where I'm at in Maryland, you go to Western Maryland, that's where mm-hmm. it's a lot of mountains and flat lands and all types of, of course, where I'm at, it's no, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But when you go to certain parts, you will see it and you'll realize, damn, am I even in the same state? You feel like yeah, you out in the Midwest yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and don't go to Oregon. The, the state that's up, it is mm-hmm. nothing but meth land up there, bro. If you, if you after, after the Silicon Forest up there, everything else is meth land. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I, you know what? Let me just go ahead. You probably have more people up here. Let me just go ahead and line my playing. Hey, I'm, you know, uh, as an anchor of, of the new black media brother, thank you for everything, man. I appreciate you it. You keep doing the work and you keep pushing them on them. And this is why we need our reparations. Cut the check. Exactly. Shout out to W Johnson X for coming up. And before I go and bring up the next person, shout out to AW1 for the two dollars. He said, Good work, Torin. I appreciate it. And thank you also for coming up. And also shout out to Sean Tate for the two. He says Frederick, aka Fred Neck. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, next up we got the person who usually comes up first, but couldn't make it up first, but is here right now. Wallo J, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man? I was in Rob's live the whole time. So, oh shit, Torian's live. Damn, it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but Rob, y'all know Rob when he gets rambling, you just start listening. So once yeah. he start rambling, I just start listening, but. People need to understand California used to be the most conservative state in the whole country. I don't mm-hmm. think some people understand that it used to be real damn conservative. Hell, Ronald Reagan used to be the governor there, so that should let everybody know. That, how, is, how that, is, that, that was the same state that he banned what was it, the, the um the Black Panther Party from coming in with their own guns mm-hmm. and stuff. They had they had the most strict gun laws. So exactly. people like, oh, and California still do this. and still do. Mm-hmm. California still Joe has did. some of the most strict gun laws. Show sure do because because of the Black Panther Party, but I mean that that don't surprise that shouldn't surprise nobody. I mean every state had a part of slavery. I mean you can go into the Midwest with Missouri and what's another one thing? Missouri and Kansas, not Missouri, Kansas, yeah, Missouri and Kansas, not, yeah, yeah. The Midwest go with Midwest. If I start battling, yeah, the Midwest. Every state had a had a part of slavery. It wasn't just the South people. Like if you don't know that by now, then you don't know you don't know history. It wasn't just it wasn't just all up, up and down. I mean, y'all can tell I'm I'm in the South. It's all over North Carolina, from the mountains to the beaches and the tri-state. These motherfuckers out here racist as hell. But I never mind. I'm not gonna go there today. I'm at work. I'm not gonna go there today. But always, you know, I always like to talk to you, Torin. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming up. No problem. Also, cut the check. Definitely. Shout out to Wallow J for coming up. Next, we got. Blueberry, blueberry muffin. What's going on? Hey, good morning, good afternoon, Torian. Hey, everybody in the chat. Thank you very much uh, for educating and enlightening everybody on the fact that uh, slavery was all over. It wasn't just in the South. Just because you're geographically in the North, like where I am, that doesn't mean that these people are any different. I'm glad uh, Wallow J brought up the point California was one of the most conservative states. He was right. Uh, Reagan was governor, banned the uh, uh, black party who exercised their second amendment rights to uh, operate the firearms up until um, Reagan passed a law in 1967. Nobody had any issues with people carrying firearms in the state house. Come on, you've got uh, sheriffs and police officers who do that. But only when uh, we exercise our constitutional rights, folks got a problem with that. And it's big time down there in California. I'd like to uh, give a shout out to everybody, you and everybody in the new black media, for educating folks on the roles these states played in slavery. Oregon is one of the most racist states in the union. Okay. Um, uh, Brother Beatzilla, 
he's from Oregon, of Oregon, and he educated people on a series about Oregon. I'm not going to go there. Y'all go and look it up for yourself because that stuff is deep. Yeah, I knew. I know. I knew. A, um, it's one thing I did know about Oregon. Oregon was one of the last states to allow black people to live there. That's correct. I do that's know that. If I don't know anything else about Oregon's anti-black history, I do know that. Yes, indeed. It wasn't until 1933. <laughs> yes, 1933, that the state legislature finally removed from its books a, a state ordinance. And it was in the state constitution that any black person that was in there would be whipped and fined. That is correct. Whipped and fined. So all of them, you know, they had that on the books. They challenged it. They finally got it off in 1933. Come on, people were born in 1933. They're still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my state, Washington State, is not much better, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, we got sundown towns. Okay. I can name a couple of them off the, off the cuff. Uh, Bellevue, Washington, sundown town, Redmond, sundown town, Issaquah, sundown town. Okay. Uh, there's others. So when we talk about California and it's fake progressivism and liberalism, that should come as, as, as no surprise. Because when you're going in deep like this, they always have to cover it up and gloss it over to make it palatable when they're selling this to the newcomers. OK, because remember, a lot of the newcomers, where did they settle in California because of the American dream? And you also got to remember, what was it? The Civil Rights Act of 1965. You had the Alien and Immigration Act, too along with that a lot of people don't know uh, you had a lot of asian where did all the asians go korea uh china taiwan japan where did they settle in california so the hate is real all right so all of my uh uh fba family in california you know i'm speaking to the choir here just like i'm speaking to the choir with all of my fba family the hate is there but we're going to um check that stuff so cut the shit cut the check i land right there thank you taria appreciate you all right gonna bring up my last person and that is jacoby what's going on hey Torian. thanks man um i live in portland oregon so i know what she's talking about and i used to live in vancouver washington clark county and um it, it is kind of uh, so. There's there's a few places you should never go. Is Malala, Oregon? That is straight up. Uh, you that's almost like you're not supposed to. You black ass ain't supposed to be over there. Okay. Um, uh, they just had like a few years ago. They had like, someone put a noose up at the um, recycling facility up in Oregon City. So uh, that tells you enough about that. But I thought they didn't remove that. Constitution until like early 2000s. I thought it was still in the Constitution until up to the 2000s they removed it, not 1933. Could be wrong about that. But, um, you know, I was always told that Oregon was a free state when I went to school in the books. They never told me about Oregon was the last <laughs> place to allow black folks to come here. Mm -hmm. And I have I had to question many things in my life. And they're like, what else y'all been lying to? But it's over here. It's kind of weird. Progressive, passive. They have a passive racism here. It's really, it's really weird. It's like you have to be, you have to be careful where you go. They ain't gonna just, they ain't gonna just tell you to your face like that. They, they, they do some weird shit to you, and it's really offsetting. Yeah. You know, they, they harass my mom. I have one neighbor who harassed my mom all the time. They just do little stuff, and uh, they trying to get her to move. But yeah. Um, when I lived in Vancouver, Washington, it was, you better not be going too far. You better not go too far. You ain't supposed to be there. Yeah. So, it's, it's funny you bring up Washington because it makes, it reminds me of 
uh, a story that happened with this black man, I think back during the pandemic. And no, it wasn't a black man. It was black people who had businesses because, you know, if your business was affected because of the pandemic, they, you know, basically put set aside for people to get funds in mm -hmm. order to recoup any losses that they had. And they actually created something that was supposed to be specifically for black businesses in the state of Washington. Do you know that they undercut them and made them split the funds that was supposed to be specifically for black businesses and made them split it with the South of Bordarians? Oh, they made them. Know. Yeah, Are I think I have Oregon. I, I think it's Oregon you're talking about. Was Oregon. it Oregon? Or, or, what, what, I yeah. can't remember if it was Oregon. No, or, it yeah. might have been Oregon. It might have been Oregon. Yeah. I'm not in touch. No, sure. it, yeah, no, it was Oregon. I remember that. They were like, um, there was one Latino business owner in downtown Portland. I know what that restaurant is at. Yeah, yeah. And, and, he, uh, got, and, he, and he got upset because he wasn't yeah. getting any. And they actually sided with him. And they made them split the money or not get anything at all. That's why I keep telling y'all that black and brown thing, don't fall for it. It does not work. Yeah, no, she she was a Latino and it was one white dude. So they followed a lawsuit and they stalled it. They eventually released the funds, but it wasn't the amount that it would have been. And yeah, so yeah, because they was gonna give they were gonna give those black businesses a lot of money. Like it was like kind of, it was like high millions, not like hundreds of millions, but yeah. I would say it was probably like in the twenties. So it was gonna be quite a bit that they were yeah, gonna release. And the thing about that is there's not a lot of black folks got pushed out of Oregon. So it's like, I think it's less than 1%. Mm -hmm. But if you pull up on Google, it's like 30 something thousand black people here in Oregon. Um, Cause at one time Portland used to be pretty North Portland, Northeast Portland was pretty predominant, but then when urban renewal came in they, over, over time, they were able to get those houses so cheap because of, you know, how it works where based on the zip codes, based on how what the crime rate is, how, how you know, everything on the value of your home. So once the, the developers came in, they got so many folks, some houses were going for $50,000, $60,000 for five bedroom homes back in that time. And now these homes are worth almost a million dollars. So my mom, my grandma, she still has her home. Um, she bought it in 1968. And uh, they tried to uh, underwrite her home like going to like another zip code and so she had to fight to keep her home they almost took her home so um but yeah the, the, that's the stuff they do here so but yeah um but see the problem is too you know what i would do every time you're trying to do set aside your lineage space and they try to sue you to stop it do it back to them mm -hmm. you know so like with the all the daca and all that stuff you know black people who have the means should be filing lawsuits in the court saying, hey, this is unconstitutional. This is uh, th this is racist. You know, the way they do us is the way we should be doing now. That's how I look at it. Hey, that's what like, uh, they don't say I for an eye for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to get all violent. Just say, OK, you follow the lawsuit against the stopping funds, just like they did with that lady. She was doing funds for black women business owners. And who's that fool you keep telling me? Ed, Bl Ed Blum. Ed Blum. Yeah, next time that that happens, anybody who's a lawyer who has the means who, who knows this area, go ahead and file a lawsuit and say, hey, this is unconstitutional, da 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 da. The, you know, if you want people to get people to stop messing with you, that that's the way to do it. So that's what I that's all I have to say about that, Tortori. Appreciate you coming up. You're welcome, man. All right. All right. I was going to shut it down after this, but I had one more person that came up and I know they are in California currently at the moment. And I said, I did want to hear from people that were from there. So I will shut it down after this person. So Don, what's going Dorian, on? What's going on, nephew? What's going on? Oh, man. You want to talk about the miseducation of formerly enslaved people. Boy, like Pac said, California is not all Palm Beach and female dogs. <laughs> it is Listen, I'm here in San Francisco. Um, it's about 12 of us here. And I'm tired of these state promises and these reparation committees and all this other stuff they want to spend. Man, leave that alone. California is so racist. You can't get a decent playing, uh, paying job here 
as an educated black man. You can't. Not if, not if you stand on your square, you can't. You know, if, if, if you want to, you know, get them mm-hmm. butter frosted yep. biscuits. Mm-hmm. You want them butter frosted biscuits. Yeah. You can, you, 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 oh, this is key. If you want to get a job as a black man, you have to be in the academy. If you're in the academy, that, that, somehow you'll get a corporate I job. That. Somehow, if you're in the academy, that. you'll get a corporate job. Because, man, I, I, as as a uh, contractor, I would go into these corporations and I would see some of everything in there, except for us. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, when when it was us, you knew where uh, where where they were going to school, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I you know um, I had heard about uh, some of the California history. Um, as it pertained to uh, slavery, but in much later years. And I had to go out and seek that information. Even find out about the uh, indigenous people of California, like the Ohlone Indians. They were darker than me. You know, and this is the kind of stuff they don't teach us. But as, 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 as Pluto has moved into Aquarius, we're going to find out all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. What you're going to find out that up is down, and down is up, and I'll land my plane next. I appreciate you. Shout out to Don for coming up, and that is going to conclude this midday stream. Shout out to everybody who came through. I definitely appreciate it. Everybody who came up and contributed to the panel. Let me acknowledge these uh, super chats again: Denise, Sherelle, Lisa Cabrera, uh, Xavier. Shout out to Bath Shakama for becoming a member of the channel, AW1, and Sean Tate for contributing to the channel today via Super Chat. Shout out to the individual that did send me a cash app. You know who you are. I appreciate it. Shout out to everybody who watched over on X. Shout out to everybody that is in the chat. I am so grateful that y'all came through today for this midday stream on this Tuesday. Tomorrow will be episode eight of the We Fought Back series at 11. And guess what? I will be doing another midday stream tomorrow now that midday stream probably gonna have way more people in here because of the subject matter but let's put it this way what i'm gonna talk about tomorrow on tomorrow's midday stream i was gonna talk about it on friday but when i kept seeing the responses from it i said no because if i put this on friday i'm gonna have to condense it to make room for the other stories so i snatched it out of the friday lineup and said i'm gonna give it its own stream and i'm gonna do it on wednesday so I will be doing another midday stream tomorrow. Y'all are going to really, really love what that one's going to be about. Some of y'all are going to be kind of upset about it, too, at the same time. But I know y'all, let's just say, put it this way. If y'all are petty like I am and y'all come up on this panel, y'all better be just as petty as I'm going to be. I'm just leave it like that. And no, it's not a triple P. It's not a triple P. Let me just put that out there right now. It's not a triple P. But it is something that definitely has to be addressed. So with that being said, y'all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we will be right back here tomorrow, same time, same place. Be safe and be one.